This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. And it's your weekly dose of Technolust. Yo, Rana. Yeah, what? What does that mean? <laughs> that means hello in French Polynesia. Well, there you go. How was French Polynesia? It was amazing. I seriously like detoxed from all technology. I didn't what? have anything on except no. for a camera. Wait, who are you the and what have you week? done with snobs? It was amazing. Like, I, th I think seriously, like once a year or so, you just need mm. to turn off everything mm -hmm. and enjoy nature. And right. that's what I did, and it was totally worth what it. What kind of nature so did you? Did you uh, um, I I enjoyed the the beautiful landscapes of the islands, mm -hmm. and I watched some ladies do some hula dancing. So I learned how to do that. They're called vahines. Women are vahines. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. That <laughs> sounds fantastic. And I, I saw I saw sharks. Oh yeah. Up close That's and personal. That's something we can hack. Get a couple of up laser pointers. And huh? Oh, and I saw stingrays, and stingrays are like puppies. Like seriously, all what? they want to do is love and hug you, and like Aww. they'll come up with their gigantic wings and just be like. Bruh. I have to deal with this <laughs> on a regular basis. It was amazing, and then I was just like, oh hey, what's up, stingray? Hi. That's fantastic. I'll be friends with you. And and you didn't get the you didn't get the you know no route to host jitters as they are a, sometimes a called bit, a little bit. Yeah. But I just drink just some wine. A, and did I'll you try sneak an Instagram here and there? I took photos, but I didn't share them until so this week. They were all later grams. <laughs> they were later grams. Yeah, I did that <laughs> recently over the weekend uh, in Tahoe, but not by choice, just because, <laughs> uh, remember the app that we showed a couple episodes back that shows you how far you are from your tower? Yeah. 25 kilometers. Whoa. I had G. <laughs> I didn't have anything. Whoa. Yeah, I had negative Gs. So you, you, you didn't do it by choice, but you were also pretty disconnected. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. nice. Also, I found out that when it comes to drones, it's kind of important. Your altitude turns out at 8,000 uh, feet. Yeah. Thrust, you just don't have as much. Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> Did it yeah. go in the lake? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, that would be irresponsible. And we, of course, all practice responsible flying when we go droning, especially in parks. Thankfully, this was not a national park. Therefore, we could actually drone. Anyway, so. that's, that's totally tangential. Uh, Let's get to it. We've got a great episode this week. We do. We've got some new additions to the set. <laughs> as Based on your recommendations. Mm. So thank you so much, everyone, for including what you would like to see on the set. I loved your YouTube comments, And by the way. Uh, kittens the, seems to have won out. The kitten, I just, I love this. So mm. thank you for voting in the I think we might just cats. keep it. Actually, you know what we should do? Every episode, we should either have a vote Lots or of cats. Uh, there's, this, uh, there's this program that we keep kicking around. I think we can do it in PHP with Node. But basically, the idea is that you would be able to upload, say, I don't know, your yeah. favorite image, like different wallpapers. We used to do Hack 5 wallpaper contests. Oh, so it'd be wallpaper. Yeah, so it'd we be similar to that. We could cover the entire back with wallpapers. OK, that'd be good, too. But I was also thinking of either putting 640 by 480 wallpapers. Oh. Oh, Seb seems <gasps> to have taken it upon himself to I don't read ASCII. I'm not um, really sure where he's going I, with I this. I do read some ASCII. I believe yeah, it says hieroglyphics. Eight equals equals. No, no, it doesn't. Equals, 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 so D. equals, yes. Uh, That's we a would lot love of to equals. get everybody uh, involved in what goes <laughs> up on the walls here. So maybe we tie in the projector with a PHP script and a bot on IRC. Have the IRC ops moderate the images yes. that go up on the wall during the live show with no the dogs. Live, when we get the live stream, yeah. See, no dogs. Just cats. So anyway, uh, that's just kind Not of one I of said. the various warehouse projects that are going on. But I tuned in to find out about file transfers. Yeah, so you didn't come here to find out about sharks. You found you came here to find out about file transferring securely from one computer to the next without the need of clouds. So that's what I'm talking about this week. It's all about this thing called Pulse, and this is previously called Sync Thing, so you might have heard of it, you might not, but it's basically this open source thing that you can download over at ind.ie slash pulse. Uh, it's totally open protocol. It's a cloud sharing program without the need of an actual server. Up Ooh, in the cloud. wait, wait, wait. Are you saying without a centralized management infrastructure exactly. that somebody could send a national security letter to and yes. get all of your data? Yeah, so, you know, it's not like Dropbox. It's not like Box.net. Well, I, was, I wasn't about like to, you know, call them out, but yeah. Well, they're not a sponsor, so yeah, whatever. Sure. <laughs> not like it would matter regardless, but still. Exactly. So, whatevs. So, yeah, it's not like any of those really, really popular ones that you probably use now and then for your non things you don't need to mm. worry about but this well is okay so what you're telling me is it sounds more secure which means it's gonna be hella not convenient it's pretty convenient 
convenient. For real? Surprisingly. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Um, I only ran into one little issue when I set this up on my computer a couple of weeks ago, but it was easy to fix. I just had to turn off my firewall. And I have that on anyway because I work around Let's you. Just open the only the ports you need. Yeah. But yeah. You can op only open the ports you need. Just turn off your firewall. Whatever you know strikes your. Fancy. Leave the firewall on. Just the ports you need. We open. Well, that's, that's what I did. Good in that. So anyway, yes. <laughs> Whatever. So the data is only stored on our computers as opposed to sharing it up in the server. So there's no other devices that are within your vicinity that you have to worry about. So you just send it back and forth between computer A and computer B. Uh, also, I should mention on their website that they talk about their security and their privacy. So they say that it is authenticated, is encrypted, and it is private. It's encrypted uh, securely using TLS encryption. Yeah. You probably know that as SSL, but yes, mm -hmm. sounds good. I don't know, man, SSL. To your heart. Yeah. <laughs> so it's available for Mac, Windows, Linux, B FreeBSD, and Solaris as well. So you can get it on pretty much anything, including your servers. So mm. yay, good for you guys. Hey, and it's open source, so that means yes. that you could probably port it to Android or iPhone if you were so uh, keen on doing so. There's also so a third-party port for this for Android on uh, Google Play. You can also get it on F-Droid if you do want to get it on your Android machine. Uh, I didn't put it on mine just because I didn't feel like it. So <laughs> you just go over to their download page, which is concurrently a GitHub. So their GitHub is over here. It's called Sync Thing. You'll notice that it's under the old name, but you can just compile your own version if you want to, or you can run the version that's best for your operating system. So I'm using Windows, so I use the one for, uh, which was just a simple zip AMD64. Once you actually run this, it'll run in the background. And this is what it looks like. So it's going to run everything that it needs to compile in your uh -huh. command line. So yeah. it's like a server. It is, Ooh. yeah. That's exactly what's happening on here. You're running your own little server for files. Yay. Mm -hmm. And how do you interact with it? Very easily. So luckily, when it runs this, it automatically opens up your own local host connection on port 8080. So mine would be you know, home, uh, colon, 8080. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's got a little web server going on. It does. Good stuff. So this is what the web server looks like. On the first side, under the green, uh, the green column, you mm -hmm. have your on default, which is going to be your hard drive and whatever folder you decide to share it to. Uh, it'll tell you if it's idle, if it's currently syncing, or whatever it's doing. It'll also let you know if it's connected or if it's disconnected, if there's a problem with it. It'll give you options to change the folder if you want to. I set mine up with a default user, Shannon Sync, and then you can choose what kind of states. It'll let you know if it's out of state and more and more so. If I go under Edit, that is where I can choose the folder path. If I haven't changed that already, uh, you can do that when you set up your account. And rescan intervals, how often it's going to rescan for new files. And then some other little things that you can edit under there as well. So I'll go ahead and close that. I love that we keep reinventing things like rsync. You know, and all yeah, of these, all of these tools that are like, you know, <laughs> all of these instant messaging platforms. It's like, yeah. what is it? We're perpetually going to reinvent FTP, rsync, and email. But you know yeah. what? So be it. This sounds <laughs> really cool. And then over on the other column, the gray column, that's Shannon W8. So that's my Shannon Windows 8 laptop that I'm using here. Uh, this is just the simple gray column that shows me my current download rate, my upload rate, and then whatever kind of utilizations are being used at the moment. So my CPU, how much of that is being used as well as RAM. I'm not transferring anything right now, so the CPU is obviously at 0%. But you'll see that go up as you're transferring different things from other computers. It's kind of nice that they so include that. I wonder because how what? I wonder how they synchronize all of the other different computers, <laughs> right? So that's pretty easy as well. Uh, under the purple column, this is where you'll find all of your different computers that you've decided to sync with it. Currently, you'll see this, this one called TXF. TJ2 is disconnected. That's because I went ahead and disconnected it while I was on vacation. Mm. I haven't reconnected it yet, but very easy to reconnect. I just have to open it back up to them. Just open up that port. So you go to add device right here. This is going to give you a device ID. So you want to put in their device ID, which will be their, it's like a 56 digit code ID that you'll receive when you first sign up. And then you can also access through this uh, through this online browser. Um, that will be a 56 ID, and let me see if I can find mine real quick. Yeah, so you just go down here under your settings and you can click on show ID. When you click on that, 
it'll give you your 56 letter and number ID. So you can either copy and paste that or you can scan the QR code to include this computer onto the next computer. So you go under add device, you add that new device ID and then you can name it whatever you want to name it. Under addresses, you can just leave that as dynamic if you need to. Mm -hmm. And then use compression and introducer. So this means that any devices configured to an, on an introducer device will be added to this device as well. I can, didn't check can that. Can you specify introducer devices? Because it, it sounds like they're using a third part. I mean, obviously, for all of these to get together and know each other, they have to all go to like a, a third party authority. I wonder if that's configurable. Probably need to look into that Let's because. See. Uh, I don't well, know if it's configurable. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not sure. I wonder if you can roll your own. Maybe. Something to look into for sure. Maybe. So once you have all of that stuff set up, you just go to your settings and you need to click restart. If you don't click restart, it won't set up the sync automatically. So it'll have to do it uh, every time that you restart your, your sync thing. So once that's done, after about a minute or so, you should connect to the other computer and you have to do the same protocol on the other computer as well so that you can connect to this machine. And the whole device will turn green and it'll say that it's connected as opposed to being purple and disconnected. And again, if you have any kind of troubles with connecting the two machines to each other, open up that port. Yep. And that should fix any kind of issues that you have and both computers will be allowed to share towards each other. So you, then you can share any kind of files you want, whether those are MP3s, movies, text files, whatever you have. So for example, in my folder right here, I was sharing just simple text files to make sure that it worked with Sebastian. So I had my little snubs file over here that just says hack five rules because it does. And then my test file, which I was sharing back and forth with Seb. So I asked him to go ahead and say something, click save and it automatically syncs with mine after that 60 second wait time mm. that I set up in my savings, in my settings. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, very easy to use. And I was surprised that it was easy to set up because you know, sometimes you get these and they are completely abhorrent. I think that we've come a long way from our sync. Yeah. And I love seeing this, not only because it's open source, but because it's cross platform, yep. because it's documented, because I'm looking for a solution where, say, we don't have to go up into the cloud and back yep. down every Agreed. time we want to save something. And I'm also a huge fan of the, I guess, in this case, it's unlimited storage. I mean, it's however much well, hard drive space on, you have. Yeah, exactly. It depends on how much hard drive space you have, because obviously it's not in a cloud anywhere. So sure, but disk space sure is a lot cheaper space. locally than it is up in the cloud. So yes. there you go. So easy, easy peasy. Let me know what you guys think. Feedback at hack5.org. Ooh, I wonder if it syncs over the LAN. I wouldn't have to. You want oh. to try it? Yeah, well, yeah, because okay. we, we've got like a T1 <laughs> worth of worth of bandwidth oh, here. Save us it's so time. sad. <laughs> so sad. The bandwidth we have here. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this quick break. It doesn't matter whether you're into file syncs or file washing machines. When you've got that killer idea, you gotta snag yourself a domain. And let me tell you, domain.com is the place. They've got this awesome quick domain discovery system and a super easy checkout process. So get this, you're gonna have that website up and running in no time. So have I told you about domain.com? I think I have. I think I've told you that they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use, but most of all, what I love about Domain.com is how fun they are to do business with. You can tweet them at Domain.com and find out about the great customer support and really why it's just a cool place. And the guys over at Domain.com get this, huge fans of Hack5, so they want to hook you up. If you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout, you're going to get an extra 15% off. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. It's time for the trivia question of the week. The last trivia question that we had was, which planet in our whole solar system is known to orbit the sun the fastest? And the answer is Mercury, with 88 days around the sun. Now this week's trivia question is, what electronic device needs to be factory calibrated to the Earth's magnetosphere? You can answer that over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies from out there. Shannon, your trivia question made me think about my favorite Sailor website. Moon? No. Oh. Sailor Mars. No, I'm joking. Uh, is Mercury in retrograde.com? Oh, boy. That's right. You two can be a hippie and check it out. It's not. Know, given it's the not. Says really? no. Something else must be bumming you out. But just in case. I was going to say, like, man, Mercury must be in retrograde because the crap is just hitting the mm. fan right now. Mm -hmm. No. No, I think opportunities are abound. Uh, hey, last week we got a lot of feedback about the hacking SMS segment that I did. I know oh. it's not a hack. 
back. It's just sending emails to gateways. Uh, but NX Ad, ADMON, NX Admon pointed out that uh, he's not sure how many people I want to text, but you can get a thousand people for a thousand numbers for six dollars. I checked out. Uh, the link nexmo.com. So I guess this is just one of those SMS gateways. You can buy those ah. so that you can do short codes and cool stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like we could have like text 4255, that spells hack five or something like that. Um, but $6 for a thousand. Uh, did the math on the 510. Uh, area code here. Yeah. We have like almost 800 prefixes. Whoa. And with 10,000 numbers in each prefix, that comes to $48,000. So thanks. Let's see if maybe we can do this with asterisk. Let us know in the comments. Oh I would love to figure that out. There's probably no inexpensive way to do this for this exact reason or else we would all get crazy text messages asking us how many cats we have. Also, by the way, thank you for everyone who has texted me asking about my cats, including um, 641. Five, no, eight, no, no, no. What? Oh, oh, I guess that would be rude. I don't know if they feel as comfortable with you as without joking. giving out your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, no, but thanks to everybody. Um, that's actually the, just the number on this SIM card, which will hopefully get swapped out here as soon as that dang Nexus 6 comes ah, out. Ah, yeah. <sighs> Techno lusting on that. Uh, I really just got to say, my Note 4 is just rocking it. Uh, it's good to see you with a phablet. I am, it's uh, been I'm a long time coming. I love this thing. I've had it for a week and like two days, and mm. I love it so far. Can, uh, and is that like five and a half inch? It's, uh, no, uh, it's almost six. Six? six? Yeah. Oh, okay, because I got the, uh, the Xperia Z Ultra, and I just wanted to say, yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, mine's bigger. Whoa. Yeah. You should see my... No. So anyway, um, <laughs> thank you for the awesome feedback. Uh, we are going to be partying soon. Did you hear about this? We are. So we haven't had a party in so long, and this is a brand new place. So we thought, why don't we have a warehouse party? Warehouse warming. Yay! So you can join us. We're going to do this as a kind of back-to-back -back brunch, warehouse warming, rave party, roller derby <laughs> thing. It's going to be pretty amazing. We got a lot of space in here to do crazy stuff. So if you uh, have heard us talk about the Bay Area brunches and you haven't come by, you need to. Lots of awesome folks get together. We eat German pancakes and talk about tech, pretty much. And it's epic. Uh, so I encourage you all, hack5.org slash brunch. If you've been to them before, we hope to see you again because uh, everyone that has come out has been totally stable and didn't stab any of us. So it was great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And so thank for you. all the non-stabbies that will join us at the brunch, can come on over to the warehouse afterwards. I think we'll be doing some drone stuff or whatever in between. No crazies allowed. Nah, and otherwise, yeah, it should be epic. <laughs> I can't I wait to I turn on the rave music yeah, and the lights. I guess I need to buy some rollerblades, huh? Mm, mm -hmm, mm hmm We got a whole course going on. Okay. It's good stuff. In fact, hey, Paul, did you see it on the security cam footage the other night? Uh-oh. What? Yeah, oh. Yeah, the security cams record HD every night, and uh, the little rave happened. Oh, just boy. whoops. Anyway. <laughs> just out of <laughs> I can't wait to get those live streaming. Oh, we need the <laughs> bandwidth so bad. IRC walls and, and wallpaper community projection. It's a common. And yes, good stuff. Email us what you want to see. Of course, as usual, feedback at hack5.org. Or tweet us, or fa fa friend face us. You can find all the links over at hack5.org slash follow. And while you're over there, you can click on shop and that'll take you over to hakshop.com and that's how you can support us directly. And then Sarah over there will pick it up all nice and send it right out to you with love. She shops it good. Mm, mm, what? Oh, she yes. She does the shop. Okay. Does the shopping. Yes, I will do the shop off camera. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, hey, I don't have to say it for you. You're here. You're back. I'm here, I'm back. Don't leave again. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. Doing the shop dance, doing the shop dance, the back, 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 back. Um, I'm I am slowly going crazy, crazy slowly. <laughs>